Hello, and welcome to the University of Wisconsin-Madison Winter 2020 Commencement Ceremony. Graduates, your path to this point has been very different than any of us imagined it would be. I'm very proud of each of you for persevering through all the challenges, large and small, that you faced and overcome to earn your degree during a global pandemic. Let me also give a shout out to family and friends. Behind every graduate, there's a story of a family member or a friend who provided encouragement, support, a little letting go, and a lot of love. I also want to express my deep admiration and gratitude to our deans, faculty, and staff. They've done amazing work to ensure that UW-Madison continues to deliver a world-class educational experience, despite challenges posed by the pandemic. We've been through a lot this year, and it's not over yet. Sometimes it seems like each new day brings a new crisis, a new demand on our attention and emotions that threatens our ability to accomplish our goals. But while we've spent many months in a haze of uncertainty, one thing has become crystal clear. Now, more than ever, the world needs people with the qualities you've developed during your Wisconsin experience. Empathy and humility, relentless curiosity, intellectual confidence, purposeful action. You are uniquely equipped to contribute the solutions we need. I know this from students I meet on campus and their peers, the more than 400,000 alums from around the world. You share a spark and tenacity that grew out of late night study sessions, cold, windy walks around campus, and rigorous coursework lab work, and discussion sections that are the heart of your UW-Madison education. I hope that when you look back on your time on campus, you'll remember not just the frustration, the anxiety, and the doubt from the last year. I hope you'll remember the pride and satisfaction that came from completing the degree you've worked so hard for. I know you'll remember the connections you made here at UW-Madison and carry them with you throughout your life as a member of the Worldwide Badger alumni family. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce Chancellor Rebecca Blank. Chancellor Blank is an internationally respected economist who has worked in three different U.S. presidential administrations. Most recently, she served as the Deputy Secretary and Acting Secretary of the U.S. Department of Commerce under President Obama. She served as Dean and Professor of Public Policy and Economics in the Gerald R. Ford School of Public Policy at the University of Michigan from 1999 to 2008. Earlier in her career, she was a member of the faculty at Northwestern University and Princeton University. She has led the University of Wisconsin-Madison since 2013. Please welcome Chancellor Rebecca Blank. Welcome, Badgers, to our winter commencement here at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. I want to thank all of you for joining us and echo the provost thanks to our deans, faculty, and staff who've made it possible for our graduates to complete their studies despite the disruptions of the pandemic. For 167 years, UW has marked the conferral of degrees with an in-person ceremony. It has been painful for all of us to break with that tradition this year. Our student speaker will tell you he's feeling a little deflated. I know many of you can relate, and I promise you this. When it is safe to gather in large crowds, we are going to put together one of the biggest, best Badger celebrations you have ever seen with you as the guests of honor. Though we cannot be in person today, we have an outstanding lineup of speakers for you, including our alumni speaker, John Felder, who 51 years ago stood with fellow students along with UW faculty and staff to demand that university leaders acknowledge and address racism on this campus. That led to many changes, including the creation of our Afro-American Studies Department. Much of our work today to make this campus more diverse and inclusive has its roots in that early activism. We will also hear from our honorary degree recipients, Dr. Craig Jordan, whose breakthrough discovery led to a treatment for breast cancer that has saved thousands of lives, and Dr. Michael Moore, who's helped open the doors to higher education to people all over the world by helping to develop distance learning. 
something you are all quite familiar with right now, but it was new territory when Dr. Moore began his work. And we have a very special keynote speaker, the star of the 2019 Women's World Cup and a proud member of the class of 2017, Rose Lavelle. And finally, our own Broadway star and alum, Andre De Shields, will close the ceremony with his rendition of Varsity. I hope wherever you are, you will sing along. Today, you join these extraordinary Badgers as part of the big supportive family of more than 400,000 UW-Madison alumni all over the world. You have overcome great challenges to reach this moment, to complete a degree in the middle of a life-threatening pandemic that has disrupted every aspect of life is no small thing. I know it hasn't been easy. I know you are missing much of what we love about Madison, like Friday afternoons on the Union Terrace, bike rides on the Lakeshore Path, and study groups at your favorite State Street coffee shop. Some of you have family members who have lost jobs or whose jobs are essential, and you worry about their safety. Some of you have been sick or have had family members who have been critically ill. And all of you have been isolated from the friends and classrooms, teachers and advisors who have made this place feel like home. And yet, you have persevered. You adapted to online learning and found a way to continue your research. You helped us set new records for public service. And last month, those of you in Madison helped drive voter turnout in the city to a record high of nearly 85%. And now, you've dedicated your class gift to promoting the well-being of our students and reducing the stigma that still exists around mental illness through the Green Bandana Project, a national movement that started right here at UW. Class of 2020, I want to thank you for your resilience and persistence and thank the family and friends who have helped you through. Today, more than 2,000 of you will receive bachelor's degrees and 750 will receive graduate degrees. The deans, the provost, the faculty, and I are deeply proud of the work you have done to reach this day and inspired by so many of you. The doctoral candidates who had to hold their oral exams virtually, the students in dance, theater, art, fashion design, or other degree programs who had to forego the live showcase events they've been working towards for years, and the undergraduates and graduate students earning degrees in dozens of other fields who are thinking about the future in new ways as they watch their plans change as the world changes. Your classmates who graduated in May faced these same obstacles and they are showing the way forward. Alan Chen earned his medical degree and is now a resident physician caring for COVID patients at a hospital that serves as one of the areas of Chicago that has been hardest hit by this virus. Shaloa Coley won a grant to create a beautiful mural on State Street and is now using her degree in journalism and her certificates in studio art and African American studies to help develop community arts programs in Washington, D.C. while she pursues an MFA. And Christina Geiger had planned to serve in the Peace Corps, but until then, she is using her biomedical engineering degree to help ensure that ventilators are meeting the highest standards of quality. In the midst, of the worst health crisis we faced in a century, Badgers worldwide are using their education as they always have to solve problems and make people's lives better. If I could give you one piece of advice as you leave UW and pursue your next steps, whether toward a job or further schooling, it would be to be persistent and flexible in the years ahead. Be persistent because the world is going to be upside down for a while you may have to apply for a few more jobs before you land one. Believe in yourself and what you can do, and don't be shy about demonstrating your abilities. But be flexible as well, because you may have to earn income and build skills in different ways before you get hired into that job that you want. Whether you want to work in healthcare, business, or politics, jobs are changing, and you'll need to look for opportunities to build those skills and change with them. You're all graduating into a world that looks very different than the one you planned for. Just as wars and terrorist attacks shaped your parents' and grandparents' generations, this pandemic will shape yours. And no matter what direction your work takes you, I hope you will carry with you a commitment to what we call the Wisconsin idea, a commitment to use our knowledge, skills, and innovative ideas in ways that will improve people's lives. To all of you, 
from Bangkok, Thailand, to New York City, to Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, and every point in between. Thank you for being part of our big Badger family. Please stay healthy and safe until we can be together again in person. Congratulations, class of 2020, and on Wisconsin. We're honored to have the privilege of awarding two UW-Madison honorary degrees. An honorary degree is earned not by completing a course of study, but by living an extraordinary life. This year, these awards will be granted in absentia, and we look forward to inviting these recipients to Madison at a time when it is safe to do so. Dietram Schäufele is the Taylor Bascom Chair in Science Communication and Vilas Distinguished Achievement Professor here in Madison. And Chair of the Committee on Honorary Degrees. Please welcome Dr. Schäufele, who will present each candidate for an honorary degree. Chancellor Blank, on the recommendation of the faculty of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and by vote of the Board of Regents, I present these individuals for honorary degrees. Dr. Craig Jordan, a groundbreaking scientist, is considered the father of tamoxifen for his revolutionary work in identifying the therapeutic drug's breast cancer prevention properties. Work he began years ago while leading UW's breast cancer research efforts. Tamoxifen has been credited with saving the lives of millions of cancer patients. His work as a teacher and mentor has been equally influential. Combined with his years of national service in Britain, Dr. Jordan reflects the very best of the Wisconsin idea. Chancellor Blank, on the recommendation of the faculty and by vote of the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents, I present Craig Jordan to receive the degree in absentia, Honorary Doctor of Science. Craig Jordan, in recognition of your contributions to medicine with the discovery of the therapeutic applications of tamoxifen for breast cancer and for modeling the best in teaching and collaboration, the University of Wisconsin at Madison confers on you the degree in absentia Honorary Doctor of Science. It is my pleasure to invite Dr. Jordan to make a few remarks in response to his honorary degree. I am honored to accept this honorary degree from the University of Wisconsin on behalf of my Tomoxifen team. In January 1980, I arrived in snowy Madison, Wisconsin to take up my appointment in the newly created Department of Human Oncology in the new Comprehensive Cancer Center. I had been recruited by Drs. Paul Carbone and Harold Rush, two giants in cancer research, to create my laboratory to study a novel research topic, the application of a new anti-estrogen breast cancer drug called tamoxifen. Estrogen causes breast cancer to grow, so my vision was to use the anti-estrogen tamoxifen to treat and prevent breast cancer. At the time, the rest of the clinical community in America was focused on the application of combination cytotoxic chemotherapy to cure all cancers. However, the saying by General George Patton rings true. If everybody in the room is thinking alike, then someone is not thinking. I chose to think differently. The University of Wisconsin was a wonderful environment to create a team of graduate students, technicians, and postdoctoral fellows. Tamoxifen was on the market around the world, but it was unknown how the medicine worked, what the side effects would be in patients, and whether we would be able to improve upon tamoxifen. I chose to study the good, the bad, and the ugly of tamoxifen. What we discovered was not only the best way to save the lives of millions of women throughout the world, but also a new group of medicines called Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulators, or SERMs. They switch on or switch off estrogen-responsive sites around a woman's body. With a single tablet, it is now possible to treat osteoporosis, reduce the risk of breast cancer and endometrial cancer, and even decreased postmenopausal symptoms. There are now five FDA approved SERMs, all with discovery origins to my laboratory in Wisconsin. As a result, women's health was forever revolutionized. However, it is people who ask questions. It is people who have the power to change the world. 
Wisconsin provided that opportunity for me at the Paul P. Carbone Comprehensive Cancer Center. In closing, I thank my Tamoxifen team nominators, Dr. Ruth O'Regan and Andreas Fiedel for their exemplary initiative. I also thank all members of my Tamoxifen team who were here between 1980 and 92 for their enthusiasm and skill in the laboratory. I will again quote General George Patton as it applies to you, today's graduates, tomorrow's leaders. Do more than is required of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Jordan. On behalf of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, we offer our congratulations. Dr. Michael G. Moore is renowned for establishing the study of distance education, scholarship he first undertook as a graduate student and visiting professor at UW-Madison. Once a novelty, distance education has become an essential tool in this unusual year. His groundbreaking theory of transactional distance addresses how, when physically distant, student and instructor can be brought together for effective learning. He led the development of some of the first international online courses, opening doors of opportunity across the world. This is the Wisconsin idea on a grand scale. Chancellor Blank, on the recommendation of the faculty and by vote of the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents, I present Michael Moore to receive the degree in absentia, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters. Michael Moore, in recognition of the contributions you made in expanding learning opportunities through distance education, the University of Wisconsin at Madison confers on you the degree in absentia, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters. It is now my pleasure to invite Dr. Moore to make a few remarks in response to his honorary degree. Uh, thank you, Chancellor Blank, for your kind words of introduction and for the act of conferring this honorary doctoral degree. As well as yourself, I would like to thank Professor Gerlando Jackson and the Department of Educational Leadership and Policy Analysis, and also Professor Sage Gilner and the Department of Liberal Arts and Applied Studies, the academic departments, which saw fit to present me as a candidate for this honor. I'd also like to acknowledge my debt to past professors in educational studies who helped me find my academic feet in Madison uh, in particular, Wilson Thede, Robert Boyd, and Bert Kreitlow. And there are so many others I would like to thank, if only there were time. I choose to name two, perhaps not always noticed at events like this, but on reflection were very important to me. First, I thank those at the university's international students services and especially the Madison community who support the international student. I came to Madison, to the United States indeed, for the first time in 1970 on a one-way ticket with a young family. And like others before and since, I came with nothing. No social security number, no income, no home, no doctor, no furniture, no car, no friends. It was a difficult time, and I cannot imagine how we, my family and I, could have survived without the generosity of Madisonian volunteers identified by the International Students' Office. And so, 50 years overdue, I thank you. A second group that played a key role in my Madison career and the many friends and colleagues in the university's extension, outreach, adult and continuing education programs. The names change over the years, but essentially university extension. In 1969, I was near the end of a seven year career in rural East Africa. I was visited in Mombasa in Kenya by University of Wisconsin Extension Dean, Dr. Luke Lamb, and it was he who made it possible for me to come to the United States. And then it was University Extension Professor Charles Wedemeyer who mentored me 
as his research assistant and for decades afterwards. So with these two names, I also recognize many others that I cannot name from office personnel in North Lake Street to technicians in Wisconsin Public Radio and even today, the organizers who welcome me back each summer to the Distance Learning Conference. My career has been shaped on the university campus for sure, but equally, I've been enriched by all those whose mission has been to support learning beyond the campus, extended to the boundaries of the state. So to them all, and to you all, and as I think back, I can remember nothing but kindness from the years that I was a student uh, in medicine. Thank you all. And finally, once again, Chancellor, thank you for my inclusion in the ceremony today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moore. On behalf of the University of Wisconsin in Madison, we offer our congratulations. Thank you to both of our honorary degree recipients. Your contributions have and will continue to be an embodiment of the Wisconsin idea in action. We will hear next from our student speaker, Sven Kleinhans, who has completed a master's degree in educational leadership and policy analysis at our School of Education. Sven came to the US from Germany to pursue his degree and to realize a longtime dream of playing soccer in the Big Ten. Here at UW, he did both, and he will share some of the life lessons he has learned as an international student and a Badger athlete. Please join me in welcoming Sven Kleinhans. The speaker normally starts each year's commencement address by saying congratulations to the graduating class. But truth be known, what has been normal over the last few months? So, I want to start by saying that I feel just like many of you. I was excited about my graduation. I wanted to walk across the stage, receive my diploma, and most importantly, have my family and friends around. Now, it just feels off. It feels like less of an achievement to graduate. In my life, I have only felt like this once before. So let me explain. A little over four years ago, I started my journey as I moved from Germany to the United States for my studies. When I was in high school, my family had a sudden turn of bad luck that led us to live in our van for a while. And then with family friends, while my mom worked three jobs trying to rebuild our lives. I thought it was time for me to make my own way in the world, to start my independence. And since I always wanted to do something that not everybody was doing, coming here, it felt like a new beginning. It felt like a dream come true. I was part of the soccer team of the university. And about six weeks after I arrived in America, I suffered a major knee injury that put me out for about 12 months. I had several surgeries. My season was over and my dreams were crushed. But I had one goal in mind, to play the first game of the new season. I worked as hard as possible. And at the end, it paid off. I was back to play the first game of the new season. A soccer game takes 90 minutes. And I can tell you that day, it was 90 minutes of my heart racing, adrenaline kicking in, and 90 minutes of drawing on all my accomplishments during my recovery. We won three to nothing. But in soccer, there's also the minute after the game ends. We call it the 91st minute. So there I was in the 91st minute after my first game back and I didn't feel anything. I thought, that's it? What just happened? Why am I not feeling more excitement and happiness? As we are all about to close this chapter at the University of Wisconsin and enter a new chapter in life, this is our 91st minute. Let's use this moment of togetherness to take a step back and see what is ultimately important in life and what we have learned here outside the classroom. Today, I want to share with you what my injury taught me in that 91st minute and why it became a turning point in my life. Let me tell you, working hard is good, 
For fact, it is one of the most important values of Badger Sports. But it should not be done for the sole purpose of achieving a goal at the expense of relationships with others. When I look back, I realized that I had focused so hard just on myself that I had neglected every relationship in my life. With my friends, with my colleagues, and sadly even with my family. During the game, I was rewarded for all my hard work. But afterward, I had nobody to celebrate it with because I had forgotten to take care of my relationships. Well, lesson learned and self-reflection accomplished. So here's my hope for every one of you. Have no regrets in your 91st minute. Nothing is more important than healthy relationships. Nothing. Not your goal and not your success. And here's why. Relationships are where we get to influence, impact, and change people's lives, including your own. After the ceremony today, we are all going our own personal ways. But wherever life takes you next, you will have a chance to build new relationships. And maybe to mend fractured ones. Or to just say thank you to someone you have taken for granted. In this difficult time of socially distancing and isolation, let's take the time to reach out and nurture our relationships. For me, I want to focus on my relationship with my siblings. Even though we grew up without much material wealth, we explored the world together, at least as far as our bicycles would take us. We did not have an address for a while, but we had each other. And now, just like many of you, I am the only person in my family to have attained a college degree. I can say that I have set a standard for my siblings, showing them, although they may have to work harder than others, their potential is limitless. And now, I plan to continue my legacy in law school while mentoring young soccer players. In closing, I not only want to thank you, my Badger classmates, my coaches and teammates, but also each member of the families represented in the 2020 class. Your dedication and support have not been overlooked. We thank you and we love you. To my family who is watching right now from Germany, even though the borders are putting a physical distance between us, I miss you all and I'm beyond proud to call you my family. It's been an honor to speak to you today. I wish each and every one of you all the best. Congratulations, and let your 91st minute begin. Thank you. It is now my honor to introduce our keynote speaker. She's a tremendous soccer player, an international sports superstar, and best of all, she's a fellow Badger. Last year, she and her US teammates crushed it at the Women's World Cup Finals, but I doubt she would score on me. Good luck to World Cup winner and MVP, Rose Lavelle. Thank you, Sven, for that introduction. We will definitely have to see about that next time we're both in Wisconsin. And thank you to Chancellor Blink and the senior class officers for inviting me to be your keynote speaker today. First, let me start off by congratulating you all on graduating during this unprecedented year. It's an absolute honor to be able to speak, even virtually, to my alma mater and all of you. Sitting down and writing this speech made me very nostalgic, I have to say. Not only was it a time I was able to reflect on my days at Wisconsin, but I also procrastinated writing it until the very last second, just like my glory days as a student. Um, a big reason for my procrastination this time around was because I wasn't really sure if I had any profound wisdom I could share. I've definitely been blessed with some great life experiences, but sitting at my computer writing this, I was racking my brain trying to think of the life lessons that have come from those experiences. And when I was up till 3 a.m. procrastinating in college at my house on Mifflin, I would always joke and say that my best work comes alive when I'm under pressure. And in remembering that, I thought, there it is. There's a lesson that I can share with you guys. It's the moment that we execute under pressure that's often remembered the most but the culmination of everything that led to that moment that means the most. A big moment for me personally was scoring in the World Cup final versus the Netherlands last year. I always get asked in interviews how my life has changed since that moment, and I always have the same answer, which is it hasn't. Um, I definitely 
always imagined that winning a World Cup and scoring in a big game like that and accomplishing a huge life goal of mine would have made me feel some kind of different. But I have to say that I feel about as normal as I could ever feel and no, as normal as I did before the World Cup, just now with a little bit more experience. Um, it was definitely an amazing moment to celebrate with my teammates and something I'm always going to cherish. But that one moment didn't make me. It's the years and dedication to the sport that I love and all the people that have helped me along the way that have made me into the player and person I am today. And I'm not over exaggerating when I say that Wisconsin is one of the biggest reasons I've gotten to this point. I still remember visiting the first time I was in the summer and I was walking down State Street and I remember thinking, how could anybody say no to this? I just thought the campus was like absolutely beautiful. It just felt like the whole package. And then fast forward, my first Wisconsin winter freshman year, and I slipped on the ice walking down Bascom in the winter time. And I remember thinking maybe the people who said no visited in the winter Um, because that would make sense. But regardless, whether it was a sunny day on the terrace or an icy day on my back on Bascom, the four years I spent at Wisconsin and the relationships I built is something that I will carry with me through every new journey that I take. The path to get where I am hasn't always been easy, though. So the next thing I'd like to share with you guys is that you learn the most about yourself during the hardest times. Sometimes we're prepared for these moments and other times they smack us in the face and hit us out of nowhere. Such is the year 2020. Who would have thought I'd be giving this speech in front of a screen instead of at per- in person at the Kohl Center with all of you looking to hit up the KK after and crossing my fingers I get in. Um, I'm 25 and I honestly still have no idea if they're going to accept my ID. But anyway, another year that smacked me in the face was 2017. Um, I finished my last semester of school all online so I could start my professional career with the team in Boston. And as a rookie, I was off to a pretty good start. I was playing well. And I remember thinking, life post-college is great. I love it. Couldn't be any better. And then midway through the season in June, I sprinted after a ball in the 80th minute and felt my hamstring pop. Um, I got an MRI and it showed that I had torn one of the three muscles of my hamstring. Um, So I worked my way back. I was looking to get cleared in September. September rolled around and I got smacked in the face again. Um, While trying to return to play, I tore the second muscle in my hamstring. So I worked my way back again, this time hoping to return February of 2018. February rolled around, and what do you know? Another smack to the face. I tore the third muscle in my hamstring days before I was supposed to get cleared from the second tear. Um, And I wouldn't play in a game again until May of 2018, so almost a year out from the initial injury. It was definitely an emotional roller coaster of a year, and I'm sure there are going to be many more times in my life, in our lives, that we're going to get hit out of nowhere and smacked in the face. And as hard as it is being on the ground, what I've learned is no matter how many times life knocks you down, you get back up and you go again, a better version of yourself than you would have been had you never been knocked down in the first place. So then the next time the universe says, you know, you can tell the universe to eat. So I've realized while writing this that it turns out that I have gained some good life lessons that I could share. And I'll leave you with this last one, a lesson that I've learned while reflecting and writing this actually. In a difficult year like 2020, with all its uncertainty and added pressure, it's easy to look back or look forward. But no matter what the past has looked like or what the future might hold for you, never forget to be in the present and recognize the magnitude of the moment while you're still in it. Appreciate the now. And right now, you're the newest graduates of the University of Wisconsin. So congratulations again, fellow Badger alumni. You now hold a degree from what we all know is the greatest university to ever grace this planet. Good luck as you start this next chapter of your lives and on Wisconsin. On behalf of the Wisconsin Alumni Association and more than 450,000 UW-Madison alumni worldwide, congratulations on your important achievement and welcome to alumnihood. While your time with us as a student is drawing to a close, your lifetime relationship with UW-Madison as an alumni is just beginning. 
Our job at the Wisconsin Alumni Association is to sustain that relationship. We provide ongoing opportunities for you to connect with the university and the Badger community, as well as to stay informed about what's happening on campus. We are pleased to offer each of you a two-year membership in the Wisconsin Alumni Association, where you'll find a wide variety of ways to engage with the Badger community from wherever you are. We hope you join us, and we look forward to seeing you again. It is now my pleasure to introduce our alumni speaker. John Felder has watched this year's national protests against racial injustice through a unique historical lens. As an undergraduate at UW-Madison more than five decades ago, Mr. Felder helped organize and lead the Black Student Strike of 1969. The protest, transpiring over roughly two weeks, was among the largest in the university's history, involving thousands of students. It galvanized community support behind the students' demands, which included the creation of the Department of Afro-American Studies. As a direct result, the department is celebrating its 50th anniversary on campus this year. Mr. Felder earned a bachelor's degree in economic history from UW-Madison in 1974. Early in his career, he taught freshman orientation classes at Hunter College in Manhattan. He spent 23 years as an administrator with Teamsters Union Local 237 in New York, retiring in 2008. As our alumni speaker today, Mr. Felder speaks as one of the many voices who participated in the Black Student Strike of 1969, a pivotal event that forever altered campus for the better. Please join me in welcoming John Felder. Good afternoon, graduates, Chancellor Blank, faculty and staff, and thank you, Sarah Shutt, for your kind introduction. Congratulations to you for having succeeded in your mission despite the extraordinary challenges we have faced this past year. I'm honored to address you in virtual reality as the university commemorates the establishment of the Black Studies Department, which came about largely as a result of the Black student strike of 1969. I was a strike organizer and press spokesman. I bring with me the spirit and energy of several other strike organizers. Willie Edwards, Donna Jones, Billy Harris, Liberty Edwards, Rose Morgan, among others, and of such barrier breakers as Carolyn Williams, the first African-American homecoming queen. I also nod to the thousands of students and some faculty who supported the objectives of the strike through marches, demonstrations, petitions, outdoor classes, and goodwill. A son of Brooklyn and Harlem, I sought out this university in 1968 partially on the suggestion of my older brother, Henry, who was a doctoral student at Stanford at the time. Several of my other siblings had graduated from Oakwood College, now University, in Huntsville, Alabama, an historic black and religious college. But I wanted to attend a secular, worldly, public institution. I was overjoyed, if slightly apprehensive, when Wisconsin accepted my application and offered me a financial aid package under the five-year program. Ruth Doyle was the director of the five-year program and in one of her many kind acts, put me up in her own home for three days until I was assigned university housing in Turner Hall. It was easy for me to become immediately affiliated with the Black Student Union upon arrival here. Black students were able to find each other, ironically, because there were so few of us. As such, we were highly visible in a Ralph Ellison invisible man sort of way. As a result of civil rights challenges and litigation, there had been an uptick in Black student admissions 
to highly esteemed colleges and universities in the late 60s. We were part of that wave. We all came to this great university first and foremost to get a world-class education, an education which in some instances would move us into the middle class and in others solidify that status already attained. We were primed to make a difference in our communities and nation. We came with great anticipation, yet with the usual student fears and doubts. Could we compete academically? Would our resources cover our expenses? Would we fit in socially and culturally? We wanted to be perceived as individuals, a privilege not historically afforded us, having grown up in a world of de facto segregation, institutional racism, and American apartheid. For many of us, the African American Center, then on University Avenue, became our haven between classes for study, lectures, debates, programs, referrals, socializing. We reflected on our fit at Wisconsin and concluded that we could make positive changes to the curriculum and atmosphere. After months of discussion with high university officials, we went on strike when we reached an impasse. We thought our 13 demands were reasonable and could easily be enacted. The university administration at the time did not. We were aware of strikes and sit-ins at other campuses, but our strike was Wisconsin specific. The central plank of our strike was for the creation of a black studies department. In that, we were successful. Other planks called for increased recruitment of black students and the employment of additional black faculty and staff. We also wanted relevant black perspectives in the humanities and liberal arts, law, and business. In effect, we aimed to broaden the academic offerings of this university. Incorporating black studies departments hastened the re evaluation of how the American story is told and taught. It has fostered deeper understanding of our intertwined cultures. It continues to speak of our rich diversity. We are very proud of the role we played in this achievement. Were I to time capsule back to the Wisconsin of the 60s, I would be similarly engaged. Were I to lose 50 years and be in Wisconsin now, I would double my efforts. Thank you and go forth and conquer. I'm pleased to acknowledge those bachelor's degree candidates who have distinguished themselves scholastically by ranking in the top 20% of their school or college or by participating in the honors program. If we were together in person today, you would see them attired with honors stoles, solid cardinal red or white with red chevrons. On behalf of the faculty, I am honored to recognize these students for their achievements. Chancellor Blank, it is my honor to present the candidates for the degrees Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Musical Arts, and Master of Fine Arts. These scholars have devoted significant time to graduate study and research. In addition, they have defended theses or presented exhibitions that have been accepted by faculty committees as substantial contributions, signifying scholarly or professional achievement in their respective fields. They are presented for the highest academic recognition in their fields given by the university, the degree Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Musical Arts, or Master of Fine Arts. It is also my honor to present the candidates for master's degrees in their respective fields, Master of Accountancy, Master of Arts, 
Master of Business Administration, Master of Engineering, Master of International Public Affairs, Master of Music, Master of Professional French Studies, Master of Public Affairs, Master of Science, Master of Social Work. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the graduate school, I present these candidates for degrees. Chancellor Blank, it is my honor to present the candidates for the degree Master of Public Health. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Medicine and Public Health, I present these candidates for degrees. Chancellor Blank, it is my distinct honor to present the candidates for the degrees Doctor of Juridical Science, Juris Doctor, and Master of Laws. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective courses of study. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the law school, I present these candidates for degrees. Chancellor Blank, it is my distinct honor to present the candidates for the degree Doctor of Pharmacy. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Pharmacy, I present these candidates for degrees. It is also my honor to present the candidates for the following bachelor's degree in the School of Pharmacy. Bachelor of Science, Pharmaceutical Sciences. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Pharmacy, I present these candidates for degrees. Chancellor Blank, it is my distinct honor to present the candidates for the following bachelor's degrees in the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business Management, Bachelor of Science in Biological Systems Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Landscape Architecture, Bachelor of Science, Nutrition and Dietetics, these scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences, I present these candidates for degrees. Chancellor Blank, it is my distinct honor to present the candidates for the following bachelor degree in the Wisconsin School of Business. Bachelor of Business Administration. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Business, I present these candidates for degrees. Chancellor Blank, it is my distinct honor to present the candidates for the following bachelor's degrees in the School of Education. Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science Art, Bachelor of Science Art Education, Bachelor of Science Athletic Training, Bachelor of Science Dance, Bachelor of Science Education, Bachelor of Science Education Studies, Bachelor of Science Health Promotion and Health Equity, Bachelor of Science Kinesiology, Bachelor of Science Physical Education, Bachelor of Science Rehabilitation Psychology, Bachelor of Science Theater and Drama. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Education, I present these candidates for degrees. Chancellor Blank, it is my distinct honor to present the candidates for the following bachelor's degrees in the College of Engineering. Bachelor of Naval Science, Bachelor of Science Biomedical Engineering, Bachelor of Science Chemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science Civil Engineering, Bachelor of Science Computer Engineering, Bachelor of Science Electrical Engineering, Bachelor of Science Engineering Mechanics, 
Bachelor of Science, Engineering Physics, Bachelor of Science, Geological Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Industrial Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Material Science and Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Mechanical Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Nuclear Engineering. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the College of Engineering, I present these candidates for degrees. Chancellor Blank, it is my distinct honor to present the candidates for the following bachelor's degrees in the School of Human Ecology. Bachelor of Science, Community and Nonprofit Leadership. Bachelor of Science, Human Development and Family Studies. Bachelor of Science, Human Ecology. Bachelor of Science, Interior Architecture. Bachelor of Science, Personal Finance. Bachelor of Science, Retailing and Consumer Behavior. Bachelor of Science, Textiles and Fashion Design. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Human Ecology, I present these candidates for degrees. Chancellor Blank, it is my distinct honor to present the candidates for the following degrees in the College of Letters and Science. Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Arts Journalism, Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science Applied Mathematics, Engineering and Physics, Bachelor of Science Journalism, Bachelor of Science Social Work. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon the recommendation of the Faculty of the College of Letters and Science, I present these candidates for degrees. Chancellor Blank, it is my distinct honor to present the candidates for the following bachelor degree in the School of Nursing, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of their respective course of study. Upon recommendation of the faculty of the School of Nursing, I present these candidates for degrees. Thank you to all the deans for presenting their candidates for degrees. I respond enthusiastically. On the recommendation of the faculty of the University of Wisconsin in Madison, and under the authority granted by the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents, each student will be admitted to the degree appropriate to the course of study you have completed. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Class of 2020, you've arrived at an important milestone, the moment when you transition from students to alumni. Tradition dictates that before degree conferral, candidates wear their tassel on the right side of the mortar board. After commencement, to symbolize your new status as graduates, your tassel is worn on the left. This is the time for graduates, as a symbolic gesture, to move their tassels. It is now my honor to introduce our closing act for this 2020 winter commencement. A gifted performer who in the last two years has won both a Tony Award and a Grammy Award for his work on Broadway. A proud UW alum who also holds an honorary doctoral degree from this university. Class of 2020 and fellow Badgers, please join the legendary Dr. Andre D. Shields in singing our alma mater, Varsity. Varsity, Varsity, you are Wisconsin. Praise to thee we sing. Praise to thee our alma mater. You Wisconsin, you ra ra Wisconsin, you ra ra Wisconsin. Uh...